Tape to remember. You wake up still partly in shock from what you saw on the news last night, which you had to edit on the news last night. When you come downstairs, you find your family sat in the living room waiting on you. Take a seat on the sofa next to Sam. Sam swallows, hesitating for starting. We're so worried about you last night. After Jeremy, everything that happened, Sam shakes their head. I wonder what they'll do with him now. Are you okay? I can't shake the feeling he might be right. Sam glances Charlie then back to you. We saw that you chose to play that tape. They paused before continuing, and I couldn't help but wonder why. Uh, I don't feel like I had a choice. But that's not good enough. Disrupt the bad people. I can't believe you did that. Charlie's outbursts seemed to come out of nowhere, and no one in the room was prepared for it. Do you even think about how this stuff affects people? You're a fucking idiot. Sam tries to interject Charlie, but he's already slammed the door. Charlie always, always was a bit black and white about this sort of thing, but Charlie can get the fuck out the house. Or get knocked the fuck out. For what it's worth, Alex, I think you were in an impossible situation. Somehow you managed to make the right call. Sam throws their arms around you. Only you were stuck in that studio having to make that choice. No one can criticize what you did, and I'm proud of you. You've never been so grateful to have Sam support you. you. Take a deep breath and gather your thoughts. It's all a lot to take in. You're not sure you fully processed what happened last night, let alone what Charlie and Sam think about it. You sigh and absentmindedly turn on the TV. It's nice that you at least got some company. The TV's playing through some old western show, but it's not quite as distracting as you'd hoped. You were never going to please everyone. Exactly. Fuck Charlie. Dumbass. It's your dumbass in the fucking booth and see what you do. Everyone end up dead. It's been six months since you and Sam discussed grandma's ever increasing medical costs. And Emma, whilst very pleasant, has proved as expensive a nurse as you feared. You can't quite believe that it's been that long already. But the sanctions are really starting to hit home now. And unfortunately, the government's only solution to help the ailing, el el bleh, the ailing elderly, Jesus Christ, I was over there remixing, is a day trip to a transition center. Why does everything seem to come back to money? It's time that you at the kitchen table surrounded by bills and paperwork uh wait this time it's you at the kitchen table surrounded by bills and paperwork when sam comes to join you today emma told you that there was really nothing more you could do except an expensive experimental new treatment that might not even help sometimes your mom wants treatment more often she talks about visiting a transition center it's hard to know what she really wants. Sam puts a hand on yours. What are you going to do, honey? She's your mother. It has to be your choice. Let's get the treatment. It's a difficult choice. Oh, shit. That's all our money. Are we broke? Difficult choice. You never know. I mean, but that—that—that's—that's that's a mom, though. So, whatever it takes. You never know when you might need that money, particularly not, but particularly for the kids. What if Charlie gets in an accident? What if something happens to Susie while she's abroad and needs help? But what if you could give them a few more good years with their grandmother? Surely, it's worth the cost. We broke. Holiday update. Damn, is that is that dinner? Oh, that's breakfast. Okay. <laughs> this is your finishing up breakfast. Sam comes in with the post. Oh, we got a postcard from Susie. I hope she's having fun on her trip. Sam reads it aloud as you finish getting ready for work. So I've seen what it feels like. I've seen what most feel what feels like most of Kyrgyzstan. Really cool place, but so cold. 
Hope Chippy enjoyed the gift. And before you say anything, guess you were right to make me pack an extra pair of socks. Same gives you a small kick on the table. Next, we got the train to Conislava. Much warmer and loads of people to enjoy. I could have stayed there forever, but I had to had to sand Pal Marino before it got too cold. I'm glad we did. We got one or two more stops for heading home. But I'll be back for Christmas, I promise. Hope everyone's doing well. Love, Susie. Not like it's been a hell of a trip. Worth every penny. We broke. Write it back. We broke as fuck. Don't come home. The 20 week war. Oh shit, here we go. Good evening, Alex. It's Bozeman here. Hope all's well with the family. Just a heads up, we're expecting those troublemakers that disrupt to attempt to hack the channel during the broadcast. So keep an eye on the interference screen and stay out of the orange. Let's keep the news on the air. It's important now more than ever. Oh god. Some rebar. So, Junior's team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. Well, what does that mean? You mean to do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans? Oh, just don't get drawn into talking about the wars. What are these? They do know this is the news, don't they? You didn't hear this from me, though. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. They just gave me a speech for something tonight. I'll get out in the late news. Oh, great, so they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. I better set up over here. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know? Which tells the cautionary tale How are you? Brave young ladies battles to survive the cruel administrations of our neighbors. It At 11:25, it's in sizes. It and tonight, Dr. Adrian Atkinson Bliney I'm will be getting his teeth into Fiona from Hamble Bambleton, who is in Ten seconds, everybody. On the humble biscuit. Off, and that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five. To our close down. Four. But first, three. Tonight, it's time to join Megan and the team for the National Nightly News. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Uh. And able to work out where or when the next strike will come. Proud parents throughout the territory find themselves ever more impressed by the bravery and commitment of their incredible children and the job they're doing keeping supply lines open against all possible odds. Don't starve. Advance's food program moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. And judging by the looks on this happy family's faces, it can't be <laughs> too soon. They'll be getting a good meal tonight on the government, just like the rest of us. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centers have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. It's up to the other 89% of us to remind our tardy friends that not taking advantage of all the exclusive services available to cardholders is now, as it should be, absolutely criminal. Start Jeez. me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally tonight, our mutual friend, 
Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pendron Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best and we'll be sure At least to bring not dead. all the details of that court case every night. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lancashire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, their budget went up. God damn it. I'm a little overexcited to announce I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C and later we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more but first tonight let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire good evening Prime Minister have we caught you exercising oh have we started Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. Uh, just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gym more or anything. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try Whoa. for a quick fiddle up the car park. Language, Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What, what's wrong? Oh, shit. Motherfuck. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep. That's the one. And can you tell us what brought about this new year? Can you tell us what brought well, about you know, this? Mrs. C and I were watching, you know, the night the blockade began, when Jeremy Donaldson, well, you know, and it was blistering hot, as I'm sure you all remember. And I, I were a bit wheezy from all the cigars and all that. And Mrs. C turns to me after, you know, after the signal dropped away. If I do put it in the, in the orange, I wonder what happens. And she says, Peace, she's dead. I could go on without you. She's dead. So I made a decision. And since that day, I have stopped smoking cigars. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we fucked up. It's too hard to get back once you're once you're gone. It's too hard to get back. I, I just went stupid. Good evening, Alex. It's Bozeman here. Hope all's well with the family. Just a heads up, we're expecting those troublemakers at Disrupt to attempt to hack the channel during the broadcast. So keep an eye on the interference screen and stay out of the orange. Let's keep the news on the air. It's important now more than ever. So, Junior's team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. Well, what does that mean? It means you do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans. Oh. Just don't get drawn into talking about the war or politics in general. They do know this is the news, don't they? You didn't hear this from me, but... Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. I'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know? How are you? It is what it is. It is what it is. I'm missing to you now. Ten seconds, everybody. Rumble dogs. And that takes us after the weather and public information. Going in five, four, three. It's time to join Megan and the team. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. 
Advance's strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert, unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Proud parents throughout the territory find themselves ever more impressed by the bravery and commitment of their incredible children and the job they're doing keeping supply lines open against all possible odds. Don't starve. Advance's food programme moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with the reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centres has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organisations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. With dwindling medical supplies leaving many of our most vulnerable facing chronic pain, it can come as no surprise that the transition centres have found themselves stretched to capacity. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Manklipool. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pension Ridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best, and we'll be sure to bring you all the details of that court case every night. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lampertshire. That's coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. I'm a little overexcited to announce I'll be interviewing the one and only Lil C and later we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more but first tonight let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement who's speaking to us from his home in Lanfordshire good evening Prime Minister have we caught you exercising oh have we started Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. Uh, just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gym or anything. As my old mum used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car park. Language, Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What? What's wrong? Oh, shit. It's shit, isn't it? Yep. That's the one. And can you tell us what brought about this new you? Well, you know, Mrs. C and I were watching, you know, the night the blockade began. You know, when the night the I was finished, I stuck around. And I did something I would never have done in my old life. I listened. I listened to Jean, who told me that although she has financial security for her and her family for the first time in her life, she finds also, for the first time, that she can no longer sleep peacefully at night. I listened to Klein, the and counting the days until they sit him down and tell him he is exactly that. 
I listened to Anna, who spends her lunch times in the school cafeteria eating alone, because she is the only girl in her class who isn't a go-getter. They have never met, these three, and they are of different ages and social backgrounds, but they share a common experience. They share a nagging feeling that there is something deeply wrong in our utopia. And I share that feeling. And maybe you do too. In the days and weeks ahead, I will be speaking throughout the country. But you don't need to wait for me. Disruptor everywhere. Every bar, every street corner. Look for us and you will find us. You are not alone. And advance are not the only team. Also, it doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? Did you know about this, Gail? Jeremy Donaldson is to be put on trial. Let's all think about that for a moment. One of the nation's most respected and beloved truth seekers is to be put on trial. And for what? Waving a gun around, he clearly had no intention of ever using. That Jeremy Donaldson had a very public breakdown is undeniable, but rather than law enforcement, wouldn't medical experts be the one to call? Of course, that was never going to happen. Jeremy Donaldson had a very public breakdown because he simply couldn't take what Advance were doing anymore. He knew that the national nightly news was being transformed from a bastion of truth into a frivolous chat show. And like a mother watching her child fall under a predator's spell, he couldn't stand by and allow that to happen. He chose to stand up to advance, and their response will be to destroy him. He will be discredited, shamed, tried and convicted. They will break him as an example to us all. But today, Disruptors named him an officer in absentia. We welcome him to our ranks. We are with you, Jeremy. You do not stand alone. I used to really like you, but you're a breath of fresh air. But I've been watching you. It's getting crazy. You know what? You get more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Well, uh, I imagine that there Sorry. will be Sorry. You the imagine? usual... Up no, what, what, I mean, what do, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As my old mum used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the pew. What else you got? Sorry? Only cards, what else? A little piece of my life you want to rustle through? Get out, refill my life. Get out, refill my life. Ah, come on. Uh, come on. OK. What music do you listen to when you work out? What music do you listen to when you work out? Well, Gail tells me that I work out to the little C. But I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. Oh. Do you think the C stands for... It stands for collaborative, <laughs> Prime Minister. It yeah, actually, that, that does Prime make more sense, actually. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs C and many a fine single malt. I want for nothing. So for a decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the Culture Spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear that. We'll be back after this. We'll be back. One minute back, everybody. Oof. And that is what happens when you wander from the car. I don't think he knew about her statement. I don't think anyone's supposed to know. When you mentioned it, Bozeman's face turned a colour that I think you call embolism. Am I in trouble? Bozeman? Nah, you're like the torture you never had. Mm. I suppose the higher-ups might fire him, though. Who's Lil C? Oh, she's on justice, me. Who's Lil C? 
Are you winding me up? What? I'm civilized. I read books. This hangover cause you can buckle like the say is hey, look now, this is the life. Just like the pro Jesus. say, you can cheat on your the wife. The crew will no have spotted the updated mixing disc. You'll need the new buttons during the next sections. First, we'll need applause when the guest enters. Oh, and God. What? Mad Jesus. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. What? Five, four, three. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Men, before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. I just say, you look incredible. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh, what's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water what? and having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. What? Wow, is, is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. <laughs> oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, good Lord. So your first album, F My Face Together, <laughs> it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. <laughs> I mean, what was that like for you? It was just yeah. so weird. I was in all the papers and the magazines. Overnight, I went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show. Wow, that must have been bizarre. Not really, it was just like any other morning. You know, get up at five, go on a four mile <laughs> run, have three meetings on my cabbage bath, but then only then was my dad actually talking to me. Oh, of course. I mean, the famed country singer, Billy Bob Jean Short. <laughs> I didn't know what changed. No, there's nothing that strange about it, Megan. Okay, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. Uh huh. <laughs> so, uh, this newfound explosion into your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as my manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? So, what's the album about? So, I thought it was about, like, how pretty and great I am. Yeah. But actually, it's about monetizing youth, I think. Or about, like, promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah. He says, insecurity is an opportunity. Oh. <laughs> Do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will it all be forgotten about. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yep, it's from my album Put It In My A Together and it's out tomorrow. My friend let her 13-year-old son join the go-getters. He's occupied now. Busy, even. His room's never been tidier. But he keeps notebooks he won't let her read. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer, a good answer. But somehow it's too good. Like it's been prepared in advance. Or possibly by them. We want to know what the news will no longer tell us. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts. We will defend your right to information. We will resist and we will disrupt. Me on the arse. I think what? things could have been different. 
you know, like better. But I don't know. What? I love doing autographs. What did I miss? Me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> did you always want to do music? What? Uh, well, ever since I was a oh, girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come, when I press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practicing again. Oh, you? So, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? <laughs> yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, "Make Quagler proud, and you might just survive childbirth." <laughs> well. You know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. And on that problematic note, uh, <laughs> you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So, it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here is Mill C with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Force's favorite, the Queen of Team, here to break in your blockades. Oh, good lord. Lil C! Uh -huh. you see I'm hungry <laughs> there's a place in me that's empty I want that meat you back in only you can feel that crack in me Jesus. I'm under sea so come and free me ain't no disruption here boy I got no agenda just want the team in me no dirty foreign member don't stop the morning drill there's hope <laughs> I ain't no vehicle's daughter Come in Spanish on my border Quick before I get much older Tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier An enemy soldier So let them try and break our dream We fight and love and die at two So all of me at Clemens boys Can come and use me as a toy I wanna see some action So come and break my sanctions I've been this wild and free Since my mom burdened me She was only 53 But gave you save her family Goddamn. There's no one judging me if I'm the one that's in your fantasy. Don't die alone, these babies gonna bring you home. I ain't no vicar's daughter, come and skirmish on my daughter. Quick before I get much older, tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier. See some action, so come and break my sanctions. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. <laughs> So go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. Can I just say, 
Thank you so much for letting me do this. It really yeah. means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Oh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. Watch out for that father of yours, won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective on me. You know what it's like. Oh. Oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? What about Billy Bob Jean Short? Is he? Oh, my dad. He's such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G&T before my meeting with the Lube guys. If they say for your pleasure, I'm going to start needing it. <laughs> There's no college and educate our family and friends. This well, next section will lead you to use all four of the sound effects to help things along. Try and pick the most appropriate one in each given moment. Do I the look actors like can't hear what you're doing, so they'll be trusting you to make the no, right choices. No, no, oh not anymore. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what, just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely. Wait, the fuck right is away. Got... 10 seconds. Five, four, <clears throat> three. Oh, good lord. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director, and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've got the algebra. I go by Jeff DePoon now. <laughs> How do you like that? Oh, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's shit. Oh, wait. And how does Angela feel about all this? And how does Who? Angela feel about all this? Your, uh, your wife. Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. <laughs> and um, why did you write this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a pro team sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Jesus. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. You have to play a sound effect, Alex. Yes, yes, now you're getting it to keep going. Good morning. Miss Craven. Oh, morning, Ray. Am I going to edit the Everything sitcom too? Right, Mrs. Craven, you look as worried as the vicar in closing time. Oh, oh Ray, it's those young louts. They vandalised my shop again. No! Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. <laughs> I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. At closing time. Oops. <laughs> I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters? or bong rats. Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time, they will fit into this society like this key, into this lock. <laughs> See? Works like a charm. 
What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And <laughs> just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection today. <laughs> oh, I think that one's addressed to me. <laughs> what? This, this one? Oh, so you're right. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> oh. It's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. <laughs> she said she got an A on her maths exam. <laughs> doing it again and because one of her friends has been helping her she was always a team player was our Brenda what's up losers, what's up, losers? Hey. <laughs> oops <laughs> oh no it's Brad he's the coolest guy in the village that's right I just got here on my motorbike Brad, we don't want any of your ilk around here. What? Brad dudes? No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? Tutoring? That's right. Maths is very important. Would you mind, Ray? Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or having glue? Hey, oh, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down! <laughs> you, you know what? We misjudged you based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. <laughs> no joy! So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <Wonderful>. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh shit. Oh man. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> all right, all right. For surprise, I now respect you as a man. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck? <laughs> Give us a hug. What the fuck? Whoa, 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 what? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, man. Sorry to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the Notice Board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... God. Um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in... What? 
four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into... Uh, they put them into millions. What the fuck? I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies. apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes. Yes, let's go to that now. What the fuck? Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centers and will not hesitate to detonate and yeah, will not that. hesitate to detonate. We are hearing stories of power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkistan and Konislava. All our equipment seems to be resetting. Um... Can we get this confirmed? Can we get this verified? I need this verified. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are receiving this, but if you are, then you have to know. You have to know what's being done, what's being done right now to our neighbors. This is unprecedented. Our government has <coughs> committed an act, multiple acts, of mass destruction in our name. Nor do I care how you voted. You didn't vote for this. None of us did. They, we, this can't be. Uh, we are uh, waiting further news and, oh, oh. What if they respond? We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. The fuck? Thank you. <clears throat> the fuck is going on? I, I don't really talk about my personal life in my job. It's not relevant or important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. And right now, I, and right now I, I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently traveling the continent for work. And I don't, I don't know where he is right now. And I should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this, this news. And you also have loved ones on the continent in Urkistan or Javier, or San Palmarino, or, or Konislava, which is where David was when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know how you are feeling tonight, believe me, I do. But I also know that there's, there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet. We can't know that yet. But together we will find out. And I will be here every night feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. Jeez, the telephone networks are overloaded. Okay. We'll find him. Do we know exactly exactly which cities were hit or Megan? Megan. We will find him. Jesus Christ. Neil, get out of here, man. It's the time for that. Hmm. <clears throat> Thank you.
disrupt ruin the broadcast. Yep, guess they did. You have received a small bonus. Okay. We're still making money. Yeah, I knew Advance was going to do some shit, though, but I, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, Jesus Christ, this shit is fucking worse. It's terrible. Okay, we got a new, uh, new section there. 